here's a quick look at what I've been playing recently, and that is this one, Sea Lion. It's the proposed German invasion of England, and it's in World at War, World at War magazine, even. World at War number 52. And, of course, Sea Lion never actually happened, but it was definitely thought of by the Germans that they could try and invade England. And they had plans all drawn up. Uh, that was all historically right. But they never went through. They just kind of let it go and never actually did it. Um, possibly because they lost Battle of Britain, 1940. Maybe, maybe not. The jury's out on whether the Germans would actually have done it. Because some people think, yes, they would have if they had won the Battle of Britain. Some people think no, because they were just making up the plan just to kind of try and throw the British off the centre of what they were actually going to do. So, that's what this game is based on, the kind of, the facts that we know for Operation Sea Line. Uh, rules, there's about 16 pages of rules, and they're actually okay. There's a couple that are a bit ambiguous, um, but most of it was okay. Uh, the whole idea is that up here you have Churchill who is in Parliament and obviously that is where the Germans want to end up but the game is pretty massive. Uh, the whole thing is land, sea and air so you've got the whole kit and caboodle here and I've had to make about four pages of notes just to kind of keep myself right as I'm playing through it. Each turn is pretty long and it's right here, game turn. This is a setup and game turn one. And the Germans have people that they can transport in here. Next bunch of people are gonna be in turn three and then that's just my little marker, but there's a whole bunch of German troops come in on turn four that are available, but they have to be shipped in. And potentially this was one of the problems that the Germans were facing on an invasion of England is how the hell do you get the troops to England and you're going to have to take the transporters back, bring in more people and so on. So it would have been pretty much a logistical nightmare. Uh, right, I'm trying to think. The setup that you see here for box two boxes at the top that's the British Navy at the top. RAF is the second one down. Uh, over here, you get the Germans. And this is all the kind of boats and transporters are these ones here. There's planes here to the right. Uh, as I say, the map's massive. I mean, you can see the map to here. There's another 12 inches on the map to the left. Um, why, I don't know. It seems overly big but uh, on the very bottom right you've got all the German planes again they're out of shot but they're just over there uh, we've got mines everything's in sectors A, B, C, D, F, G, H so on. well not H but G and what you see here are the British troops that I've kind of lined up you can put these guys anywhere on the map they don't have to go there the guys in the boxes, yep, they do have to go there. Um, that's the initial setup. How does this thing work? Well, it, as I said, it's pretty long turn. German player goes first. And there is a weather system you can use, which to me it seems pretty hopeless. You can roll in turn three onwards for weather. You can either have clear or rain, and that's it. A roll of six is rain, so you've got a far better chance of being clear. But if you do get rain, it pretty much cuts out more than half the game. So if you get a turn and it's rain, then you don't really do anything. It seems pretty hopeless. I just don't do it. Um, so German player starts. They do German naval movement. 
So they can take any other boats for here, any boats they like, transporters as well, with troops on them, and they can put them in sectors. If you put a boat in a sector and there's mines or another boat, then you have to do naval combat. Uh, you then do German air movement which is where the Germans can take any of the planes and they put them in sectors again you've got fighters and bombers fighters obviously are fighting each other but they can also do air support and the bombers are mostly air support so the Germans would put out their planes and they're obviously thinking about where are they going to bomb that kind of thing then there's British air reaction so then the British player reacts to the German planes and puts British planes on the map. If you want, you can put planes on the hexes. Again, counts as air support. But the idea being that if, uh, let's say, there was one British plane here, or let's say the Germans. The Germans put one plane there for their air movement. The British air reaction could be one fighter so it'd be one against one but the British player could say now nah, I'm going to put two fighters so now the Germans kind of regretting the decision of putting that fighter there because there's going to be two against one and same with the bomber you could have a bomber that you say I'm going to bomb a boat that's here and the British could put two fighters to take out your bomber that kind of thing there's not a lot of planes in the game uh, again it's kind of assuming that British lost horribly at a uh, Battle of Britain so it's assuming that and that there's not a lot of planes for the British Germans have got more planes but again the, for the length of game 13 turns it's not a lot a previous game I played I played to about turn 6 roughly halfway and I had no boats left, hardly any planes, and both sides were in tatters. So I dread to think what would happen when you get to around turn 10 or something like that. So you've got to be careful anyway with the, the air placement thing. It can come back to bite you. So now you move on to air combat or resolving the air combat. The British always get to go first. In resolving air combat the only exception is if I can find one oh there you go these little pylons they're part of the British kind of radar network if you like if the Germans take six of them they get air superiority and the British lose it so British get to go first you, you do your air combat as I say you could have two against one if you've got more planes than the opposition, you can counter-attack. Uh, there's a whole ton of rules as to you know, which one you should target first and all that kind of idea. Uh, you've done air combat, then you go on to naval airstrikes, which is obviously bombers, bombing boats, and potentially uh, any other bits and pieces you've got in the sectors. Then it goes on to land movement, German land movement and combat, where the Germans can bring ashore any troops that they've got from here coming across to try and land. And these white arrows are the most favourable hexes to land in. There are some just up there, they've got a red arrow on them. They're less favourable. And you take a penalty if you try and land in the, via those hexes. Uh, same with these guys here. These guys are gliders and transporters where they can just plonk people right on the map. Uh, gliders are one-time use. These transporters can be kind of reused, but uh, they will drift when you put them on the map. So again, you got to be careful that way. Uh, if... Uh, units uh, overlap each other then that's combat um, adjacent hexes 
doesn't count as combat. Something I had to try and remember. Uh, okay, so you've done that. You've done brought troops in. They've all fought. They've done the combat. Then you do German night naval movement. So the Germans get to move anything naval. They get to move it again. Combat slightly different in, at night time, but similar-ish. Then <laughs> you finally get to the end of the German uh, actions. And any planes that are on the map go back to the bases. So all the planes get taken off. That is half of one turn. <laughs> I kid you not. That is half of one turn. You then do all the same again for the British. So you'll have the British move boats. British will bring the planes in first. Germans will do their reaction to that. Resolve the planes. Airstrikes. The British can then move their forces and do combat. Night naval movement again. And then that would be the very end of a turn. At that point, you move a turn marker. So it's, it's pretty hefty. It's a pretty hefty thing. I will show you this as well. Well, I remember. Well, I just randomly knock counters over is on the back you may not see it very well but that is for movement movement costs through the different hexes and there's three different columns because you've got uh, infantry vehicles and mountain units to complicate it even further if the British are moving through a city, for example, non-London city, it's two movement points, but the Germans it's three. So there's a few things there where it changes depending on whether you're British or German. You know, just to complicate things further, because you need it. And tables. Wouldn't be complete without tables. Gotta have tables. This one is for conditions that you're going to go through when um, like combat um, Germans coming ashore that kind of thing because you're going to have modifiers dice modifiers for various things so if a German uh, tries to attack in a fortified hex that's also a city a non-London city then there's a whole bunch of dice roll modifiers that just stack up uh, this table here is your main one for combat where you'll say one side has got to have superiority so for example I'll try and not knock everything apart here if you have uh, let's see Pick this one. If you have a German coming in here, then they go into that hex, it would trigger combat. That's a fortified hex, that kind of orange look to it. That's fortified, but that little blob thing there is a city, non London city. So if the German comes in on that hex, and that's a favourable hex, He's going to have a dice roll modifier of minus two for the, fort the fortification and a minus two for the city. So it's going to be pretty tough. And it may not refocus, but I'll try and bring it as close as I can get it without going crazy blurred. But you have a quality rating here, an attack, a defense and a movement. So you look at, say that would be an attack of two, the German unit, and just grab one at random, and this guy here, this guy's got an attack of two, this guy's got a defense of five, that would be more than double, which doesn't really count, it usually counts when it's trebles and quads. Um, you then look up the table, that so you would say that, the defender 
has superiority in this case. The higher number, basically. And you look up on the table, you roll a dice, but you've got to apply all those modifiers to it. And eventually, you get a result. <laughs> and the result could be things like uh, all attackers and defenders reduced, uh, attackers must retreat, that kind of thing. You just loads of different results. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty hefty game. Um, I'm just kind of looking at notes to see if I've forgot anything. Um, transporters is one I'm not quite sure about though. There's transport units to get obviously the German troops on shore. The book seems to suggest that the and the transporter would drop the unit off, stay there, and you can't move it until the next turn. That would kind of suggest that you bring it in on turn one, you can't move it again until turn two, which would be you taking it back to load it up again, and then you would bring it back again on turn three. So it seems to suggest that the Germans can land on odd turns, one, three, five, seven, so on. Um, I don't know if I've got that right. I may be completely wrong on that one. No sure. Um, I mentioned the, the whole idea that the British go first in air combat. Uh, da -da -da, the naval airstrikes that you can do are slightly different from the usual combat that it can also come back to bite you because if you roll a single dice if you get less than or equal to the bomber air support value is a hit if you get greater than that but it's less than the targets number then your bomber can end up taking a hit that's a bit weird but that's how it goes uh, zone of control is the usual six hexes, but if a German unit got to say here and ran out of uh, movement points, they can gain a free one to get them to there to initiate combat, so that's quite good. Uh, I mentioned that the transporters, the air transporters, they can end up getting botched. Uh, you roll to see this little may not be able to see it right enough but there's a little icon here diagram for your drift for these guys and then you have to roll again to see if it is actually a successful landing because you could end up drifting into trees and then the whole thing is botched and the unit's lost and that's the end of that idea and uh, supply uh, you've still got to be in supply for the British it's any city hex or any map edge and for the Germans it's the transporter boats um, that is their only supply in uh, but something else I was going to mention and I don't remember what it is now oh that's what it was when the Germans do come ashore even if, let's say, let's say the Germans turn up here and there's no unit there, they still need to do a combat check on that hex. Uh, not quite sure why, I mean, I don't, are they getting attacked by a, a swarm of seagulls? I mean, I'm not quite sure why, but you go to do combat on the hex and obviously the hex gets a battle value of zero. But... I don't know, as I say, maybe the, maybe it could be an attack of pigeons or something, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that's a quick look at Operation Sea Lion. Proposed German invasion of England, which I may well do, you know, a video of at least a couple of tons, because the tons are quite long. So I might even do um, a video where I'll do a turn, a full turn, and then maybe a video of just clips of the other tons but anyway let me know 
If you want to see a video of it, whole thing or just clips, uh, and I'll see what I can do.